Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday, the weekly YouTube series where we talk about video game console repairs, mods, and restorations. And for this week, I have something really rare and special inside of this little bag. Uh, well, this bag in and of itself is really cool because this is for uh, the TurboGrafx-16. This is like a little carry case for, for holding your games. But inside of it today, I have a PC Engine LT. And uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of you guys don't know what this is. It's uh, it's not a console that you see every day. Um, actually, what it is, is the rarest version of uh, the PC Engine, otherwise known as the TurboGrafx-16 here in the United States. So this is like a kind of portable version of the console. So so you've got your PC Engine here, you've actually got your, your control buttons here, and then um, it has its own uh, built-in screen. Now, eventually NEC made like a truly handheld version of... Um, of the the PC Engine, and it was called the PC Engine GT, or also known as the Turbo Express here in the United States. Um, so anyway, this is part of the you know Long Island Retro Gaming Expo Museum, and uh, it was working until fairly recently, where now it kind of powers on intermittently. So what I think might be the issue is capacitors, and so um, on this week's episode, what I'm going to do is uh, open this thing up. We're going to take a look at those caps. We're going to replace them and see what we can do to get this thing fully operational again. Okay, all right, let's get started. All right, so to get started with disassembly, you've got five screws that are over here, so that part is straightforward enough. And um, I'm kind of going to be doing this uh, somewhat impromptu because I've only actually repaired one of these before. This is my second one that I've, I've uh, looked at. These are extremely hard to come by. Um, so, so, yeah, so you can lift this up over here. And yeah, I recall, yes, that there are some ribbon cables here. So one of them here is for the speaker. That's, that's this guy right here. And then there's a second one, and this is for the television, I believe, the little screen. Um, and I'm just gonna take a look at that real quick. Yeah, and so, this is a bit awkward, but there are some bales over here that you have to lift up. And there you go, that's lifted. And now there's two others here that need to be removed. Okay, and then this middle small one here, which also needs to be lifted up, and I believe it's already free. Just got to take a quick look at it. Oops. Yep, that's out. And now this little guy. And I can already tell somebody's been in here, um, because there are some capacitors, and they're they're mounted a bit strangely. So I'm gonna have to take a look at that. Okay, there we go. So now the main board is finally free. So this is this is the PC Engine LT. And my recollection is that these components here for the screen don't have any capacitors. I'll look at that again off camera but um, to be sure, but I'm pretty certain that this part is actually without any kind of caps. Um, this came flopping off. This is just the power switch. And then there was another toggle switch over here which came flying off during disassembly, so I'll have to put that in later. But yeah, most of our attention is going to be focused on, on this component. And uh, so yeah, we're going to take a look and see what's been done to this system. Um, and just cursory looking at it. So it does actually seem like capacitors have been replaced on this already. So, so some of them have been done with like passive components, so I can see that here. These um, are ceramics, and they have replaced the um, electrolytics that used to be there, and so that's kind of good. But then I also see some things like this and this, which I, I want to take a look at, and definitely this. This is definitely strange. Um, so I'm going to take a look at these capacitors and see what's been done to them, and and uh, yeah, we can uh, kind of go from there. All right. All right, so what I'm going to do um, just to continue is remove a few more things so that I can completely get the board free and that's going to allow me to you know really get a feel for what's going on with this board. So fortunately it's just these four screws and I think that's all that there is left. So I mean you know all things considered disassembly of this system isn't too bad. You've just got those three ribbon cables which I remember being a challenge to put back in. Okay, that's it. So it's completely free now. 
don't need this. And uh, yeah, so now we can take a better close-up look at what's been done here and try to make sense of it. And so, so yeah, so from my cursory like examination, you know, some of what was done to this system already, I think, is good. So like having you know these ceramic parts, this is this is good because ceramic capacitors don't leak like electrolytics do. And nowadays, you can get ceramic capacitors at much higher values than when this uh, device was initially made. And so you know. It's a little bit more money to do this, but the positive side is that these should last for a long time. So I actually don't suspect any of those off the top of, you know, for, for now. But definitely some of the stuff that I think is weird is, like, these caps. Like, um, you know, I haven't talked about it on this channel before, but it's not only important to replace aging capacitors with modern ones on retro consoles, but also to make sure that you use quality parts. Um, so Panasonic is a good brand. Uh, Nichicon is an excellent brand. That's what I use for most of my... Uh, replacements is either one of those two manufacturers. Um, but if you use generic uh, manufacturers, then you're probably just going to have issues. Um, you know, it's just a matter of time before these low quality capacitors start to fail. They'll leak electrolytic fluid and cause damage, and then you're just back at square one. Um, and so, you know, to avoid that, it's better to replace capacitors with high quality components. Another thing that isn't so great about what's been done here is you want to make sure that you're picking capacitors that have the right kind of form factor. So, you know, when you're taking a cap that might have the right value uh, in terms of capacitance and and uh, an equal to or higher voltage, um, that's great. But if it's too large to fit on the board, then then it's not ideal because then you get all sorts of weird scenarios like this where the, the cap is twisted in weird angles and maybe these leads are under mechanical strain. Maybe they bump into something and cause a short. So, you know, that's not ideal. It's much better um, if, you know, you just take your time, find the correct size and shape and the right capacitance and voltage and then put that in. And then like down here, you know, there's three caps over here and, and maybe this fourth one here. And I have a feeling that all four of these are factory original. Um, and I'm going to try to flip over the board and take a look at the, the, um, the leads and, and they kind of look like they haven't been touched. They look kind of like they're original. So, so I'm going to go ahead and um, start with, with those components. So we're going to replace, you know, these five or six caps here, uh, possibly this guy over here, which may be original as well. Um, and then I'm going to try to reconnect the console and see if it powers on and, and works. And so, you know, if that's the case, then this might be a really short and quick fix. Uh, if not, then what I'll probably do is consider looking at the ceramics. And I mean, normally those don't fail, so I actually don't believe that that would be the issue, but I can double check those connections and make sure that they're good and kind of go from there. So, uh, so yeah, so we're gonna get started with removing these caps. All right, so I'm gonna start removing these capacitors and um, I'm not gonna go into crazy detail about um, how I'm removing them because that's something I've done in previous videos, but basically I'm gonna use my desoldering gun to pull out most of the solder and in some cases, I have legs like like here where, you know, this one I, I used a fair amount of heat and I still couldn't clear out this hole completely. So what I ended up doing was just taking my, you know, gun, and, I'm sorry, my, my soldering iron rather, and heating up the leg. And then and then once it was hot enough, I was able to pull the remainder of this one out. Um, so I'm going to do this like, you know, one at a time because... Um, you know, there isn't much documentation on this on this board. There isn't like say a capacitor map or something like that. So, so I'm going to take my time and um, and I'm just going to show a quick example here. So, so this is like a 220 microfarad capacitor. This is the original one that was in there. This is the one I'm going to replace it with. And you can see that the size is much shorter. Um, this one has also the correct capacitance and voltage for that spot. But because it's smaller, I'm not going to have to contort the thing into some kind of weird shape in order to get everything to fit. Um, so ideally, you try to do this when you're, um, you know, recapping a board. And again, this is a Nichicon capacitor, so it's a high-quality manufacturer. So that increases the chances that things are going to run smoothly and that this, this system is going to run for a really long time. So here's another 220 microfarad capacitor that I'm going to be putting in. And I just wanted to point out, I don't know if it's coming up in camera really well, but there's like a little tiny circle uh, I'm sorry, a little tiny dot on, on this round circle here showing where the cap is going to go. And that dot indicates where the negative part of the capacitor goes. Um, not all of these have that kind of marking, um, but, but fortunately these do uh, so far. And um, yeah, another thing is that this board is so tightly packed that um, you know some of these caps aren't even labeled. So you have to be very careful when you're doing a recap of this board. You really want to take them out one at a time 
and match the capacitance and voltage and put them in. So it's a little bit of a slower process than you would on, say, like a Game Gear where the position of everything is very well defined. All right, so I just moved the, removed the last of one of those 220 microfarad capacitors over here. And, and you could see right underneath the cap, there's a whole bunch of electrolytic fluid. So, you know, I could see it as soon as I started moving the cap around and it's just all sitting there. So that is definitely a sign that these cheap garbage caps have started failing. And this, this is probably going to be our cause of um, why this thing isn't working. I, at least I hope so. So yeah, I'm going to clean this all up, put in some nice new caps, and we're going to just keep going with it. Okay, so we are back, and I've finished doing all of the uh, cap replacements. So, you know, all, it wasn't that many. It was just uh, about six of them. And um, so yeah, now I'm going to go ahead and assemble this system, and we're going to see if that was enough to get it working again. Again, I, I don't really suspect these ceramic capacitors, so I'm going to leave them alone, um, unless I still have problems after I, you know, plug this thing back in and try it out. Um, one thing that was kind of cool, which I noticed, and I figured I'd mention here too, is that I noticed that the polarity of every single capacitor, or pretty much every single capacitor, is such that the negative side is facing towards the back of the unit, and the positive side is facing towards the front, and that's kind of cool. Um, I mean, the only exception are these sideways facing capacitors, like this guy here and this guy, but if you look at every single electrolytic, all of the negative stripes are facing that way. So yeah, I just thought that was kind of cool to mention. All right, so I'll be back in a few minutes with this system reassembled, and hopefully we'll have a working PC Engine LT. All right, so some time has passed since that last cutscene that I did, and unfortunately, replacing the capacitors did not get me a working PC Engine LT. So I, I thought about what else could possibly be responsible for these problems, and one thing to uh, consider is that maybe with time or maybe with damage from those capacitors um, that the power regulators on, on this board have gone bad. So on the PC Engine LT, there's actually two of them. There's one over here, uh, which I've already replaced. And so this is your standard 7805 voltage regulator. So this will take your, um, your DC input from the power jack and convert that into five volts. And I think this one is mainly used for managing the PC engine itself. But it's not the only one on the board. So if you flip the board over, you'll see that there's also like a little surface mount um, chip over here that's on the opposite side of the board in the same general location. Like this, this whole region here, this is all related to power management. So that guy is also a voltage regulator. I'm gonna put a link in the description for what type it is. And um, I also want to thank my friend Ben from iFix Retro, and uh, and also someone uh, that I wrote to on the on the forums, and I'll have a a link to his uh, post as well. Uh, his name is Neil, and both of them were both hugely helpful in um, sourcing exactly what I needed to replace these regulators. So yeah, so with their advice, I got these two regulators. Um, I installed them, and. Um, it was pretty straightforward to install, and uh, so yeah, now I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the unit one more time, and hopefully we'll have a working PC Engine LT. Okay, so we are back, and um, yeah, so I've reassembled everything, and uh, yeah, now we're going to go ahead and power it on and see if we've got a working system. Oh yeah, <laughs> all right. Um, so yeah, that seemed to be the trick. So it was a combination of those garbage capacitors that we replaced, and uh, also I think some damage that was done to those power regulators, and uh, now we've gone ahead and replaced those, and, and everything seems to be working. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of demonstrate this system because this is not something that you see very often uh, online or in real life. So, so yeah, so basically this is like a kind of handheld version of the PC Engine. And um, you know, right now I'm using my Turbo EverDrive because I don't own any Japanese uh, PC Engine games. I have TurboGrafx-16 games, but not not uh, PC Engine games. So I can use this device to um, to play games easily. So so basically I'm just gonna go through this menu really quickly and uh, and just pick something. Um, let's pick Blazing Lasers. There we go. That's a fun game. And so yeah, you can take a look at the screen and um, I'm not sure how well this is coming out on camera. I'm gonna maybe try to adjust the brightness a little bit. Here, there we go. So to my eyes, this is too bright, but this is looking better on screen. And so you can see blazing lasers here. 
And uh, so, so the way that this works is that you have a controller here, so you can play by holding it, although it is kind of awkward doing that. Um, but technically, yes, you can use this for your player one and, and it works. You also have a port here, so you can connect this up to a standard PC Engine controller and you can use it um, like a standard uh, system would. Um, what's also really cool is that on the back, there is the expansion port for, um, for the PC Engine CD. So you can actually play the disk drive games uh, with this console as well. So, you know, it's a really unique item. I mean, they made very few of these. They did not sell well. And in the end, NEC came up with the PC Engine uh, L, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, the, P the Turbo Express in, in the United States and the PC Engine GT uh, in, in Japan. And that's like a truly handheld TurboGrafx-16 or PC Engine, and, uh, and that was far more popular. All right, guys, so, um, yeah, so this was a successful repair. And, um, yeah, if you guys like this kind of content, then definitely subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it, and that helps the channel grow. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll have more content like this uh, every Friday. And, uh, yeah, thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.